Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to a new episode of Positive Vibes, maybe PVM, the talk show. I'm your host, Dante Dash Smith. Just dealing with some technical difficulties from IG. Thank you for that, IG, but we bounce, you know. So, with that and said, with that said, we got a special guest tonight, G. War, coming on to talk about his music. So, guys, as I post up this topic, what's the vibes for Sunday night? You know, Eagles won. So, City of Philadelphia, we up 3 0 in the division. Feeling real good, real ecstatic about that. Also, shout out to the NFL for, for you know, bringing Jay Z on board, you know, and just and up in the ante of the halftime performances. Like last year, we had Kendrick, Dre, Snoop, 50, and Mary. This year, we got Rihanna, you know, looking forward to it, looking forward to it. Especially as a fan of hers, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to that. So I got that cutting out. Okay. It's going to be one of those nights with the technical difficulties. I see you, Insta. I see you, technology. Trying it. Trying it. But we still going to prosper. So, hello. So, uh, we already got a special guest up in here. We're going to post this title and then i'm gonna bring our guests up in here and we'll start tonight's conversation guys and for those that were just in the room like and to those just entering the room thank y'all for tuning in there kicking y'all son. damn how you living cuz i'm what's good i'm chilling, chilling how you feeling how you feeling cool i can't complain i'm at a little family function Okay. I mean, we celebrate. You know what I'm yeah, I know. We three and zero in the division. You know, feeling good, feeling real good. Real good. You know, Devonte Smith representing the Smith name strongly out yeah. there today. The word today was a good day. Right. Then you had to use the AK. Then you had to. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So. Because um, I want to thank you first for coming up on here, you know, and I wanted to have you up on here because, you know, not only are you my family, but also I'm a fan of your music, you know, and I also, you know, as a fan, I also want to put people on to your music and I feel like, like you're one of the few artists that I listen to nowadays that actually have a message and what they say in their music. And that's important for me because I'm a storyteller. I like stories when I listen to my music. I like to hear someone's journey, what they're going through, what they're processing through. And you're someone like I've noticed like throughout the years, the progression in your music has changed and evolved as you've evolved as a person, you know. And you've always been able to sprinkle in like what's going on in your real life. So I've always appreciated that as a as a listener because you know like it helps me as I process and I go through my own shit you know like when you hear someone going through their own stuff you know kind of give you perspectives on different lives so I wanted us I wanted PBM you know to you know get to know you completely you know from from beginning to now you know so we're gonna start off early with some of the questions and then work our way up to more questions that are prevalent to nowadays you know but. My first question to you to begin this whole conversation is what inspired the passion for music for you? Like, where where was that itch to perform or to create born? And how was it? Uh, it came from pretty much trying to find who I was as a person. Mm-hmm. I feel like as, when you're young, you, you, you figure out what you like and what you like pretty much most of you as a person. So for me, for the most part, what I loved and what I liked was hooping and, and making music, and rapping. So right off the bat, that was my whole personality, or who I was as a person, formed around that, doing music and, and uh, basketball. So growing up, I always, always had a basketball in my hand. And I was always had my ears and feet on what's going on with the music world, hip hop. And it was just a matter of time before I started picking up that pen and start rhyming. All right. So what made you pick up the pen instead of, and pick down the basketball? Like, what's, what was it about rap that called you? Oh, no, don't get twisted. I still got that ball in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> don't see y'all can't see me. Don't get it twisted. I'm still hooping out here. I still get shit at all. You know what I mean? But, um, I picked up the pen because I, I felt like I could do it better than this. Than some of these people I was listening to. 
you know, a lot of times you got you, you critique certain people or what they're doing, whatever the case may be, whether it be a movie or how they sing or whatever the case may be, you critique people on their everyday life. And if you feel like you can't do it, then there's only so much you can say. So my hope is like you always saying, you just dance in third place, try doing it. So it's like, all right, well, I started doing it. So did you start off as a battle rapper or were you first like introduced into like songwriting? Was that like your niche from the start? I think, I think everyone started off in from Philly kind of in the, in the battle rap because we came up listening to uh headshot and all them rap DVDs, you know what I mean? Everybody came up, that's what we listened to. And on there, they was just, they was going there. But for the most part, I was never really a battle rap type boy. You know what I mean? Cause I was a little bit more flashy. My, my first album I ever bought was uh, Mace and Oh, okay. And so I feel like that kind of uh, molded my personality as, as an MC, as an artist. You know what I mean? For the most part, man, yeah, I mean, don't fuck with me. I did the bitch, but yeah, I mean, you don't want these hands here. You don't want this work in the street, none of that. But that's pretty much how, how I was molded for the most part. Listen to that, and yeah, I mean, the hip hop from the rap DVDs grew up on, on me. Yeah, I mean, had it. So all that was sprinkled in. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I can take it. So was Mace one of your musical influences, influences as well? Definitely. Definitely, all the world was, was a classic album. He came with the bars all crazy. Definitely, definitely. And who are your other influences? Like, who who else did you like either pour from or? Uh, I sure you remember from a uh, last interview. He's definitely Biggie. Yeah. Biggie, Biggie was the first artist I ever heard rap, and I was just like, I wouldn't change nothing. That whole song was perfect. Everything was just perfect. I couldn't perceive nothing with Biggie. I was like, that shit is perfect. And he was the first artist I ever really listened to him. But like, that shit is perfect. I wouldn't think nothing. Crazy. So yeah, it was Biggie. And then uh, later on, it was Drake. Because Drake introduced singing into the movie. Before that, for the most part, niggas wasn't singing on these rap tracks like that. Not them singing. They didn't sing and then start rapping. That wasn't the thing. So Drake made that popular. He got me. That kind of inspired me to actually start using utilizing my voice too. And have you how how have you like that transition? Like as you started singing on more tracks, like do you enjoy it more? Do you feel like it's like something that you just do just because that's the wave nowadays and you prefer the more rap? Like how do you feel about it overall? About singing? Yeah. Well, for the most part, I kind of fell back from singing a little bit. I'll sing a little bit here and there, but for the most part, I kind of fell back from it. Well, what made you fall back from it? Um, I figured I'd let the professionals do it. Mm. <laughs> I figured I'd let the professionals do it, you know? So when, if I need something sung, I'm reaching out to, to an army artist that actually really, that really, really do this. I don't want to play around with it. When I'm giving you this music, it'll sound good when I'm it, but it'll sound even better than someone who this is what they do, they think. You know what I mean? No, that's real. That's real. Yeah. The, 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 the singer slash rap combo is Mr. Hip Hop, you know, like that used to be a, a real big thing in the 90s that I love. Like you always get your flyest rapper with, with a fly singer, make a classic tune in, we get the rapper singing over it. Don't always sound as good as it could sound, but you know, it, it, it I guess it pacifies for today's, you know, today's taste. Yeah. So what, what, what made you fall in love with hip hop, you know, necessarily? Like, Man. What about rap that called you? You know, like it's one thing to you know be attracted to music, but what was it about rap and hip hop specifically that made you want to be like, okay, this is where I want to, this is where I want to create. Man. What was it about hip hop that made you fall in love with it? That's a good question. That's a good question. I think it was because, as a black man in general, growing up in America. We don't really have a culture. 
the culture was stripped from us because, you know, we came from Africa. So our culture that we know, we don't really know our culture. The culture that was created for us was hip hop. So because of that, you were groomed into it. You were groomed to love it. And it was so exciting and amazing. And it took all the other amazing songs, the army songs, and flipped it and allowed people to lay down their poetry. It was too amazing for the time to join me. It was too much of a movement, such excitement to it that you had to join it, you know? So growing up, that was my, that's my coach. It still is my coach. A lot of people say they do hip hop, but most black people, we are hip hop. It's our coach, who we know. You know what I mean? Most of we don't, we don't know where we came from in Africa, but we know hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> we can tell we you where Mickey from. We can tell you where Jay from. You know what I'm saying? Like, hip hop is the culture. So I had no other choice but to fall in love Because it's, it's who I am. It's who we are. Man, no, you you're not lying about that. It definitely is. It's dripping in the blood. Right. So take it. All right. So as you started coming up and you know you you started creating songs and everything, that first performance that you had and starting to perform with people, how was that for you? Like, what was that feeling like when you first stepped in on the stage in front of other people and you shared your talent with the world? Like. How was how what was your mindset going into it and your approach going into it? For say again, say again, what was my mindset going into what? The first time oh, yeah, the first time you did a performance. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, what were you thinking? I, did performance, I was a nervous, quivering, speaking bitch. I didn't know. <laughs> really going on stage. And when I got on stage, all that shit was going on. Because I knew the music that I was doing was dope, and I knew people were going to feel it. So when I was on the stage, that was something totally different. I still get that way. I'm, I'm very nervous and shook up a little bit before I go on stage. And when I go on stage, calm. calm. If it was like this exactly where I'm supposed to be, and I have the utmost, utmost, uh, I have the utmost confidence in my music. Because I don't, I don't be writing bullshit. The no, people that be writing bullshit, they get on stage, they be a little shaky because they know they writing bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I get on stage, I'm doing my thing. I know they're going to feel it. I've never got on stage and performed, and people have been like, nah, that wasn't it. When I get off stage, I get a lot of handshakes, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of teeth and bombs. Yeah, no, nah, I can really dig that. Okay. So getting into your lyrics, you know, like you, you get deep on a, a lot of tracks. Um, it was a lot of tracks off your last project, the introduction that stood out to me, you know, like, well, the whole project, I should say, really was a was a hit, you know, but it was a lot. It was a couple tracks that stood out to me more so than others, you know, and one of them, uh, you had a young lady singing on it and you was talking. It was Back to Life was the name of the song. Shout yeah. out to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you tell me about the creation process and what inspired that song in particular, like, and the lyrics, you know, like, and how important they were to you and why, you know? Um, I was just with with Erica Badu. Erica Badu was part of that, that vibe. Um, I think I was listening to Apple Tree. I might have been listening to Apple Tree by Erica Badu, and I wanted that vibe. I wanted something like that, something that, that, that Erica Badu vibe. Because Erica is like beautiful and perfect with, with laying out that type of vibe and making you think. It wasn't just a song, it's really making you think, it's laying down, you know what I mean, your life, what's going on. So the whole song is pretty much about coping with life as a black man. You know what I mean? You got your family, you got your homies, you got your girl, you know, music, whatever you love, that's, that's generally how you cope with life. And you can tell in the hook, the hook goes. Nobody really knows all the shit that you go through. They only see what you, what you show them. And I feel like a black man in general, we could be set on fire still looking at you. Like, look, we, we cool. <laughs> everything cool. You know what I mean? Everything, up, everything around me is on fire. I'm over here like that. You know what I mean? That's, that's a feeling that so many people understand and vibe with. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's all too real. That's all too real. So, um, 
describe your writing process for me. Like, walk me through your writing process. Like, how do you go from concept of idea of song to creation of song? Like, whether that's thinking of the beat, the lyrics, like, how does that whole process work for you? Well, first and foremost, my process started with me. Yeah, I mean, shout out Flexico. I know he was on here. Um, shout out UNECs. Shout out Brian. You know what I mean? Shout out uh, 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 IDB. It starts with the beat, the instrumental. And the beat or the instrumental tells you what the song is about. You just listen to the song. And it's pretty much, I'm pretty much an archaeologist to the beat. I'm chiseling what the song is. It's already in there. It's chiseling that shit out. Yeah, you know I mean, the song when you listen to the beat, it'll tell you exactly what the song is about. And you write from them emotions. And it's, it's as simple as that. It could be hard to chisel this shit out, or it could be easy. I've written songs in 15 minutes, and I've written it took me like five days to write it. It really depends on the beat. Okay. Is it like ever an uh, instance where it's like because of the song that you're taking distance? Like maybe a song might require, might require you to be more vulnerable than others. So that might require the writing process to last out longer. Oh, definitely. 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 definitely most definitely. When it comes to like them braggadocious beats, shit like that, you type of vibe, so I'm just talking my shit. That's, that's very easy. That's very easy. But when it comes from like deeper places, shit, it come from emotion, like my song I wrote about my mother, or a song I write about my wife. I'm about to get married. I mean, these songs that come from a deeper place are harder to get. The hardest song I ever had to write was a song I wrote about my mother, her passing. And that was the hardest song I ever had to write. That song took me a week. It didn't take me a week because it was hard to get it out. It took me a week because I was like running from it. It's a hard emotion to go through. Like, I definitely, the paper I was writing on, I definitely had tears tears to writing that shit. That's a hard thing to do when you take those type of emotions and put it together. So, yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely telling people to definitely go listen to uh, the song I wrote about my mother called More Time. Because that's definitely how I was That's one of my favorite songs, man. Yeah. 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 So how, how are you coping with that? Like, how are you feeling like mentally like, and dealing with it day by day? Bruh, you can't. There's no such thing as coping with it. It's just, just a bunch of weight and you get used to walking. You know what I mean? You get stronger. It's just a bunch of weight on your chest and you get used to walking. Nobody ever has gotten over their past. It's a bunch of weight and you get used to death with that. What's up? So, like, when you, when you're writing songs about her, like, are you do the memories are they more like pleasant memories, or is it like a mixture of good, bad, or is it just like it's it's whatever you're feeling at the time? You just can't really control. It? Um, once it gets once it gets the beat tells you put the right. So when I heard that beat. I wasn't in my head like, yo, I'm about to go write this song about my mom. We're gonna look at this beat. I heard the beat. I tried to come up with something else. And the beat was like, no, nah, nah. you know what you're supposed to write on this. So I had, I mean, you had to write it. It's simple as that. You can take that. Yeah. So let's let's talk about your your future, Mrs. White. Your your future wife right now. Like let's let's lighten things up. So what about her? Well, what first what makes her so special that you wanted to get married? Because first you don't come run across too many men our age that's you know looking forward to jump in the broom at such a young age. So what <laughs> was what was it about her that just made you be like, you know what? I like her. I like her enough to put a ring on it. You know, not just to keep her around. I'm building. I'm building the empire. I'm trying to be first generation millionaire. Knowing that the person I have by my side needs to either make me better, make me smarter. She has to do something. She has to be able to pass me these bricks for this empire I'm trying to build. And there's so many women who can't do that. As weird as that, 
There's so many women who can't do that. There's a lot of women who are princesses. I can't deal with princesses. I need a queen of my And when you find that person, you have no other choice, but you have to wife. You know what it is. My father told me the one the one that's meant for you, she comes when you don't want her to come. <laughs> when you have a, a ball out here. So she came and I wasn't about to let her leave out of my life because she made everything so much easier for me. You know what I mean? She gave me focus, gave me right, gave me what I need. So it was no brain. When you find that person, it is what it is. I could damn. Yeah. I can take that. So how has she influenced your music? You know. You, you, you heard uh, 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 uh she inspired my first love song. She inspired my first love song. Uh, what's the name that's of my the one with Nidera? Huh? That's the one with Nidera? No, no, or no, that's no, the, uh, I'm the I'm actually on the um, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I just drawn a blank on the name, but I know what you're talking about. Though. I can't believe we're drawing a blank right now. <laughs> but it's also the introduction album, guys. Like, it's, it's definitely a hit. Uh, that's my favorite. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I was drawing a blank, but that was my first ever actual love song. I wrote them songs for women before, but... To order, to order to write about an emotion, you need to have have experience. You can't. I don't know who out here writing love songs and they've never been loved. That's just gonna take a year to care. Yeah. You don't know what it's like. Why are you writing from it? And once I felt that for the first time, once again, I heard the beat. You knew what he was like. You know what you're supposed to be writing. And I wrote it. Tell me about her reaction when you first played it for her. Oh man! Uh, and how did you first play it for her? Like, what did you set it up for? Or was it more so just like come listen to this thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, def I definitely set it up. I was in the car, and I picked her up, and I played it for her. I can't just drop the song, and she just like it's a song about me. She, I, it's too many obvious. You know what I mean, so she got in the car, and I was like, look, look this song is about you. She's like, it's about me. You ain't out here. Like, I was like, it's about you. I played it for her. She started crying. Because she understood everything that I was saying and where I was coming from. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's what she did. I can definitely do that. I love that. So, let's talk about the new project now. You know, Ooh. Smoke Talk. Smoke Talk. Yeah. So, First, what, what inspired you to want to do Smoke Talk? And also, did you feel added pressure for what Smoke, creating Smoke Talk because of how good the reviews were from your last project? Nah, this shit is easy for me. Um, this shit is easy. This, this music, this music is easy for me. So, so Smoke Talk came about, I was inspired by Reezy Gonzalez, shout out Reezy. Yeah, I mean, he's from Badlands, really. He dropped the EP called, uh, I think it's Coffee Day. And the EP was dope. And I was just like, man, I haven't dropped this music in a minute. I need to drop some music. Because I've just been dropping singles. I was like, I don't want to drop a single. I'm going to do an EP. So I literally, really just went to my library, seen the music I had, and put it together. Uh -oh. <laughs> it was literally music that was just sitting. It was music that was just sitting. And I knew the vibe of each, of each song, and I knew what the vibe that I wanted for the EP. So the EP was called Smoke Talk because um, I seen, seen something when I was my drive. I was driving. I was trying to come up with the name for the, for the EP. I was driving around, and I seen a group of niggas moving forward, driving around, you know, just laughing and joking or whatever, passing the weed back and forth in the car and shit like that. Just having a good time living their life. You know what I mean? And you you know those vibes when you chilling with your homies or whatever the case may be. Y'all just vibe. Yeah. Music in the background. I wanted my music to be that. Just smoke talk. <laughs> when you out with your homies, you know what I mean? You only listen to certain shit when you with your homies. Yeah. You ain't listening to a bunch of deep talk, crazy, you know what I mean? You want to vibe. 
He wants some shit. So that's where the, the name came from. Okay, the playlist for the homies. I can yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely do that. You ain't, ain't got to think, think about what y'all listen to for the AP. <laughs> Front to back. So do you have any upcoming, any uh, new music that's coming at the end, of, any more music that's coming out towards the end of this year or early next year? Or are we just, we're sitting on the EP for the rest of the year? I honestly don't have an answer for that, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, right now, I was going to release another EP in November. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what exactly it is that I'm doing. I, I might... I might do a video for every song on the EP and push that for the rest of the year. There will be some singles. I'm also working on something else on the rap with my own yo okay. But um, for the most part, I can't even give you a solid answer on that. Oh, that's okay. There's no videos to come with. The more no. videos definitely come with. Okay. Is that, some, is that like a goal of yours to have like more visuals? Just definitely. Over? Definitely. Right now, I think I got like uh, maybe five or six videos. Mm -hmm. My YouTube page, make sure I check out my YouTube page. Too. G, there's a W A R R G. There's a dot. W A R R G. So there's a bunch of videos on there. A video for squad with lights, with lights with fan fans. Uh, video for uh, show me love with infamous crime stars. Video for Soul Blow off of my uh, album. Last introduction, there's a lot on that. Oh, I did that. So, um, how's the collaboration process? Like, how are you uh, when it comes to collaborating? Are you just specifically working with people that you know have a good um, repertoire of talent, or is it people that you already have previous relationships established with? I right, walk me through that process and even the recording process that you do with them. Like, is it together or are you like sending tracks back and forth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That process is a little different. It's weird. It's, it's back and forth. That can be, I met somebody on Instagram. We vibe. They like, they like the music. You like my thing. I like the music. You better come. That type of vibe. Or it could be me floating around with my homie. Like, yeah, he rapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah do some music for me, but it's never just like, it's it's never been, you know, let's meet up and do some music, meet up and choose everything for the most part. I generally have the beat already, have the hook already. I pretty much map out everything. It's like, yo, that's all you got to do is do you. <laughs> and it'll be fine. Do you. So every, every, um, Every feature I've, I've gotten on or gotten, for the most part, I've mapped out everything and they just hopped on and did their thing. I just made sure they did their thing. I mean, I definitely, and I made sure I never hopped on anything with somebody that I felt like was going to, you know what I mean, spit that shit. Are you ever hesitant about that? Like, uh, ever concerned, like, somebody might outdo you on their track? Or is that just like your competitive juice is just like, I want them to bring the A game? Yes, yeah, pretty yeah. much. But first of all, if you rap better than me, I'm already going to switch shit. So if you do it better than me, the, 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 single, I, the single was hot. The single was hot. I'm already going to do my thing. So if you come harder than me, the single was hot. I'm glad you did. But I don't know what you have to this time. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Man. yeah. 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 So yeah. how? Yeah. Same example of that is uh, is Benny the Butcher with Johnny P. Kelly with him and J. Cole. Cool. Oh, yeah, I love that song. But Cole was repping that thing. Cole was wrecking it. But it wasn't like Benny was no slouch neither. So automatically, that shit is fire. It's a hit. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? So if you come on my, if you come on my track talking about something about the body, that's what I want you to do. <laughs> try, try. You know what I mean? Get on the drum. Now we got to hit I can definitely dig that. How are you uh, managing pursuing your career goals and relationship? Like, how are the two intertwining where you're like finding peace and time for both and for yourself? That's why I'm. That's why I was telling you earlier, man. When you find when you find that queen, that makes things easier for you. Mm -hmm. It makes life better. 
She gonna make it work. It was it was very simple. She understood everything. She understood the situation that I had, and she adapted to it. You know what I mean? And it, was, it was pretty much seamless. It was pretty much effortless. I make sure I make time for it. And when I'm out on my shit, I make sure I get back on my shit. No, it's good. You need somebody to hold you accountable for yourself. Like, somebody that's going to push you, have your back, make sure you, yeah, you need that. Shit, that's what we all looking for in a queen. So we're wrapping up now because we're coming up on the, uh, the 8 o'clock hour mark where we wrap up. But before we get out of here, we do this thing where, you know, you leave lasting words, but I want you for this episode to kind of tell us why everyone should tune in to Smoke Talk and why they should, you know, follow you and be interested in your career evolution, you know? Okay. Well, first and foremost, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, word of mouth is the best advertising you can get. And everybody been coming back and texting me saying I was five for five on this EP. Nothing more fire. Nothing but fire. Yeah, everybody, y'all, we constantly out here looking for new music and new artists because a lot of people just hop on these tracks and they say the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> they just beat us high. It's supposed to be cool. So we give them good music. Like Kanye West, good music. We give them great music out here. So if you want good music, come spark up and listen. Come listen to Smoke Talk. You know what I mean? And all, all the shit I got, the last introduction. I got a lot of stuff out here. If you want to look for a new artist that you want to fuck with the lyrics as well as the beat, the song, not just the beat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Check out some more. That's real talk. Got real talk. Stephanie tap in. But I do have one last question before we get out of here. What's your favorite song that, that you have created thus far? You know? Favorite song? Or your most memorable song to you? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've. I don't, I don't think I've accomplished that yet. This is, uh, I got a lot of music, but I don't think I've accomplished that yet. I think it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't great music. I don't think I've accomplished that yet, this song. I think I've got close to it. I, I got a lot of songs I love. Show Me Love, That's My Baby, uh, Squad, uh, No Escape. I got a lot of songs I love, but that song that I'm just like, this is the greatest song I've ever did. I don't think I've accomplished that yet. I like that though. I actually like that though because that means message yet to come. Exactly. So, God, I do have one. I I know I just said twice that I had two last questions, but I have this is the final final question. Now. <laughs> like, so, what's the one thing you've always wanted to be asked during an interview that no one has ever asked you? And this doesn't necessarily have to be music related. It's just anything you wish someone would have ever asked you during any interview you ever been on that no one has ever taken the time to ask you. Like, you know, you ever had a moment where you just like, you know what, I should be asking about this, but okay. Like, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, know. I, don't think, I don't think everybody's asked me everything for the most part. You know what I mean? I I haven't been like who I'm listening to currently. Um, that's a, maybe that's a, that's a good question. All right. Well, who are you listening? To? So uh, currently, I'm out here bobbing to Griselda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean Benny the Butcher, Machine, Westside Gun. Yeah, I mean Love Butcher, them all. Gilles, Future always waiting for me to drop more music. Uh, Gunner. Okay. I mean, free gun. Yeah, free YSL. Free YSL. Um, Core got dropped a new uh, 
New joints before I hear he's doing something crazy. I'm listening to lights. That's about it. Other than that, I listen to some shit here and there. This is my RP. Yeah, okay. I mean, I rap, but that's what well, R&B artists, um, do you gravitate towards? Who? The R&B artists? Yeah. Um, so I'm more attracted, I'm more attracted, more attracted to, 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 to voices. Okay. To vocals. My favorite R&B singer right now has to be Janae Aiko. Oh, okay. I'm, her voice is the key to everything. Like, she... She could calm the tab and see what I was. Other than that, there's a girl called Larissa Lambert. White Heard girl, that, crazy soulful. Crazy soulful. She's dope. Uh, it's, a, it's another RB I just found yesterday. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. But, you know, other than her, Blast. I'm really rocking. I'm fan of Blast. Yeah. He's dope. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've been listening to, uh, I think it's Jason Lattimore. Ooh, okay. Real soulful dude. Yeah. Yeah, he got a song called Mutual. I hope I'm not pushing this. He's got a song called Mutual. That song is hard. Okay. I'm gonna have to look after that. I generally find these new these new R&B artists music when I put the playlist on. Yeah, you know I mean, me and my shorty go to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> put the playlist on. You hear some shit like, oh, I gotta remember that later. Yeah, man. Yeah, now that's real talk. That's real talk. That's that's the best way to find new music for real for us. Do the playlist. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm gonna let you go. Um, thank you for coming up here and doing this episode with me. You know, that's pretty cool. See, you're going back here. Anybody want to smoke? <laughs> Come get that real smoke. Get that real smoke. <laughs> real smoke talk. <laughs> oh, guys, this has been another episode of Positive Vibes, maybe PBM the talk show. Um, new episodes wait first follow us on youtube you know at positive vibes maybe to stay up to date on new and past present uh episodes also make sure you guys follow fly and mile catering so you can stay up to date with the new menu that's coming out as well as ordering a smoothie you know and guys make sure you like follow and subscribe to g.war and before before I let you out of here, you know, with the NBA season starting up, and I know you're a basketball fan, you know, who we liking, you know, who we liking for the playoffs, East, West, and well, give first, me. First, first and foremost, <laughs> I believe Sixers. So I'm a Sixers yeah. fan to the first. <laughs> first and foremost, uh, after the Sixers, I don't really care. I'm a Sixers fan. So fuck all the <laughs> you know what it is? We rock with Harden and his, his, his way back in check. Max, <laughs> that's real talk. That's real talk. And I'm, I'm going to ask you one more basketball question only because, you know, it's going on today. How you feel about the Celtic situation? You know, with the coach, Nia Long, you know, the whole girl situation. I don't have all the facts. I thought I understood it, but <laughs> Max Barnes and what he, him, him calling his, his statement back. And Matt Barnes is extreme as shit. We know how Matt Barnes is. This nigga drew yeah. him a bunch of miles to give a nigga a fade. If he said he was wild, <laughs> he was wild. Like, he was wild. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not saying nothing about that. You know what I mean? I don't really know. I feel you. That's that's exactly how I felt. I was just like, yeah. I mean, if, if he say you was wild, and nigga, you was wild. <laughs> To this day, I don't know of another person that's been that angry for that long. Because <laughs> the magnitude at that moment, the magnitude of anger you had to have at that moment is just I've seen, you know, a lot. He was angry driving, driving, sitting at light. He was angry. That's crazy. I mean, like I said, if you say he was wild, he must have been wild. I'm waiting for the rest of the details. Me too. But guys, this has been G. War. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe to him, support yeah, the music. Yeah. 
make sure y'all y'all load and y'all y'all stream listen to the last introduction as well as smoke talk let's run out the numbers on both of them yeah. you know and you guys enjoy your sunday evening stay blessed stay prayed up stay loved up enjoy the vices kiss your loved ones and i'll see you guys wednesday night at 7 p.m as we do a new episode of pvm talk show and until then i'm dante dash smith this g dot war y'all stay blessed up and prayed up deuces <laughs>